Hey guys, Wayne here from H2 Tech Videos. Today I'm going to be doing a beginner's walkthrough on the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. This is an awesome phone um, that does a lot. And so I'm just going to go over some of the basic things you need to know uh, about what you can do with it because it does so much. I'm going to start super basic. So someone who maybe have never had a Note phone before, they're not going to some of the more advanced things. So um, feel free to fast forward ahead if you feel like I'm going too basic. but Again, trying to carry this to everybody, even the first time uh, smartphone user. So let's jump right in. So uh, first of all, let's talk about just navigating the phone. So um, on the right side, you will have your uh, power button on off. If you double tap it, it actually will launch your camera as well. So just a cool little tip there. Again, just hitting it twice will launch your camera. Kind of cool there. Uh, on the left side, we have volume up, volume down, and you have your uh, Bixby button. When you tap this, it does launch a virtual assistant that you can do all kind of cool things with. Um, you can have it search something on Google. You can have it launch an app for you. You can have it call someone. Um, you can set it up to uh, recognize your voice. So you'll say, hey, Bixby, and then it'll respond and then you can say what you want it to do. A really easy little uh, shortcut is just to hold the button. So again, we have two volume buttons up top here and then the big speed button. If you hold it, you can just say your command. So one easy command I use is just set an alarm for 5 a.m. And then once you say it, let it go. So let the button go. So then it'll automatically do wherever you ask. So I like to use this for setting alarms, setting a timer if I'm cooking. Um, I might say call my wife. I might say uh, open the YouTube app if I'm driving. So you can get it to do a lot of different things just by, again, either setting up the voice command or holding the button. Now the first time you hit that button and you go to the big speed section, it will prompt you to set up the voice command. So. Uh, I didn't show you how to do it here, but when you press it the first time, first time using the phone, it will ask you to set that up. So FYI there. Um, at the bottom here, we have our three navigation buttons. So this is your home button, the square in the middle. So if I ever open an app, all I have to do is press the square at the bottom and it will take you back home. Okay, really easy. Um, any app, that's always your way to get back home. Then you to the right, we have the back button. So if I open an app, and let's say I tap on an option in the app, so I go to device maintenance. If I hit the back button, it'll take me back one step. If I press it again, it'll take me back another step, so which it took me home. So it just will allow you to you know, undo whatever you just tapped. So if I go here, and then I go to, again, device maintenance, and then I go to optimize, I can hit back to get out of it, hit back again to get to the last menu, and then hit press again, it takes you back home. So super simple there, not too much. The left button here is your recent apps button. So if you tap it once, it'll show you all the apps that you currently have open and running on the phone, okay? So if you were to, let's say you're texting someone back and forth, and maybe you're also on the Google search, and you want to go back and forth, you can just tap the button and then tap on the last app and you can just switch really easy like that. So recent apps, I can say, oh, I want to go back to my camera or my themes or the phone app. I can easily just tap it and then go back just like that. So these are the three ways that you navigate the phone. That's what those buttons do. Now, you'll also run into this situation where, um, oh, Got to tell you that. So by swiping up on the home screen, so this is the home screen here. If I swipe up, it will take you to your apps. So these are all the different things you download from games to the settings, all that stuff. You find it in this section. So it's just home screen, swipe up, you're there. Um, so I'm going to go to YouTube, for example, and I'm going to play a video. So let's just go to. Um, this video right here. Pause it, turn it sideways. So we're gonna tap here. So, actually this is what I wanted to show you. So at the bottom here, 
we have this row of navigation buttons. If you tap on the little circle to the left, you can get rid of this. Actually, tap it twice. It'll hide that bottom row of, of navigation buttons. And certain apps that you're in, you don't want that to be there. Maybe you're playing a game, for example, you wouldn't want those bars to be there. Uh, or some apps where you show a video, again, you wouldn't want that to be there. So uh, they're hidden right now. All you have to do is just swipe up and then you can show them again. And then after a few seconds, it'll go away. Now, if you want them to, to permanently come back, swipe up, sorry, swipe up and then hit that circle button twice. And then now it'll permanently stay there. So um, that's how you uh, control that uh, navigation uh, bar at the bottom there. So those are the buttons. We went over the side buttons already. Um, next, if you swipe down, we have the navigation panel. And here you have a couple of things. So you have switches that are shortcuts to turn on and off uh, various things on the phone. For example, your Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi switch here, sound. So if I tap this, it'll put the phone on vibrate. If I tap it again, and it just has the slash over the microphone, that means the sound is totally off. And if you press it again, it'll turn the sound back on. We've got Bluetooth, uh, rotation lock. So if you turn the phone sideways, if you want the video to rotate, then this is the button you press to control that. We have a flashlight, airplane mode. Now, if you drag down again, you can actually see you have even more options. So Wi-Fi calling, power saving mode, performance, mobile hotspot, secure folder. And if you swipe to the left, there's more options. So these are all different things you can control on the phone, all depending on what you use the most. And then if you go to the upper right corner and click on the three dots, you can hit button order and you can actually change the order of the switches. So maybe for you, you say, oh, you know, I really want uh, power saving mode to be a little bit close to the top. And let's see, what's another one? Maybe you say the GPS. So location is your GPS, which is an important one because um, like for me, I keep GPS off. I don't keep it on because it can be a drainer on your battery. So by me reorganizing these apps, now that I'm finished, when I swipe down the first six, the first six buttons here are the ones that are going to show up every time I swipe the first time. So it's always good to have shortcuts that you use a lot. So I have power saving mode. I have location or GPS, the flashlight and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all that. Now I want to actually tweak it again, button order. And I want to move the flashlight all the way to the beginning. Because to me, it's very helpful if every time I swipe down, I know my flashlight is the first thing on the left. Maybe you get home, your lights aren't on, and you're trying to get in the house. I know if I swipe down, I can always find my flashlight even if it's dark. So there's that. So that's like the basic navigation stuff on the phone. Now let's go into some more advanced things. So on the right side of your phone, you'll have your what's called your edge where it's a, a shortcut to a couple of different things. So uh, we have um, a section where you can just have apps. So this is the app edge and I can put apps that I use a lot. So for example, um, when you're holding the phone, all you do is just swipe and then it comes up. So like maps is a good one to have here because a lot of people use GPS to find addresses, right? So you know, if you ever turn your phone on, you know you can quickly just swipe left and I can get right to my Google Maps. And if you wanna add more apps, you just tap on one of the blank spots and it'll show you all the apps on the phone and you can say, oh, I want the calculator over there. Okay, hold and just drag that over and now you have that. And maybe you say, what is this dual thing? I don't use that. We'll hit the minus above it and that's gone. So you can fill up all these spots with different you know, things that you would use just to make it more convenient for you. Now, if you swipe again, so we swipe once to get there. If I swipe again, we have what's called people edge. So I can add a contact, someone that I call a lot so I can get to them easy um, so, or quickly. You wanna call them quick, you don't have to go to the phone app and then contacts, you just swipe and they'll be right there. 
So hit the plus, and then you can add one of your contacts. I don't have any contacts on the phone right now, so there's no one to add, but you would be able to just drag over a contact, and then once you tap the button, it'll prompt you to either call them or text them. So it's a really just convenient shortcut to set up. So there's that. At the bottom of the phone, right under the, the home button, we have what's called Samsung Pay. So you can use your phone to pay for things. Basically any uh, credit card machine where you would slide or you would insert a chip, you can use the Samsung Pay to pay. It's super easy. And Samsung actually pays you to use it. Every time you use it, they give you points. And when you reach a certain number of points, you can buy gift cards, you can get discounts to certain things. There's like a big list of things that you can um, use with the points. So I use it for like almost everything. So literally it's just turn your phone on, swipe up, oh, swipe up, and then there's your Samsung Pay. After you hit get started, you set up your account, all you do is scan one of your credit cards and um, you can actually have multiple credit cards saved in here to make your life easier. So that's as much as I'll say on that. You can definitely go online and find more information on it, but very useful, very secure, and it's a very just quick way to pay. So there's that. So we've got Samsung Pay, we did that. Next we have our S Pen, which you can do a lot with. So you may have seen the commercial, so you can now use the S Pen to take pictures. All you have to do is tap the button on the side. So you're gonna hit start, go ahead and get it set up. We talked about earlier in the video how you can just double tap your uh, power button here and it automatically launch the camera. And the camera is flat, so obviously we can't see anything, so we'll switch to the front camera. There we go. So now I can just hit the button on the pin, and right here it tells you. So single press takes a quick picture or hit it twice. Oh, that's cool. So pressing the button twice will switch you to the reverse camera. So right now we're on the back camera. If I press the button twice, it will switch the camera to selfie. And then I just press it once and it takes a picture. So that's one of the new cool features they've added with the S Pen. So aside from taking pictures, whenever you take out your S Pen, you're gonna get this little pop-up that'll be on your screen. And it's another shortcut of um, specific things you can do with your S Pen. So I can create a quick note. I can look at all my notes. I can select things on the screen, which let me show you that this is really cool. So I'm in here right now. I tap on our little option here and I go smart select. And now I can just select this section of the screen. Maybe I wanna save this picture and send it to someone. I can cut it out and I can draw on it, you know, I can write, oh, cool. Um, you would hit draw first, and then I'd write, um, you know, some caption. And then when you're finished, I can hit share, and I can quickly send it to someone, or I can save it, just download it, or I can crop it even further. So you have a couple of options there. If I hit uh, share, just to give an example, you can then send it via email as a text message, or save it to your notes. So a lot of cool options there. And you can do that on any website, any app. Maybe you're on Instagram and you come across a cool post. You can quickly hit that button and you can just crop that section out and then you can send it to someone. So really useful things you can do um, with your S Pen. Now if we tap that again, we also have screen right. So tapping that will take a screenshot of the screen and allow you to, you know, draw something on the screen or write on it. Maybe you took a picture of an email and you wanted to like circle some of the text and then send it to someone. You can do that super quick. We're gonna uh, go back and discard that. We don't wanna save that picture. So you also can send a live message. You can translate text if it's in a different language. Pin up, I don't know what that is, I never use it, so I'm not gonna go over it. You also have a shortcut, so I can add another app that I use a lot to be in that little shortcut menu. Maybe you want it to be your music, or maybe you want it to be uh, like your favorite note-taking app. Whatever that is, you can add it, 
and just have it as an option. It'll be the last option on your um, your little wheel. You actually can add more than that. I forgot about that. So I can have messages and files. I guess you can add up to three more. So now when I spin, I have my new three options right here. So that's just a few things you can do with the S Pen. Um, the rest, you just kind of have to play around with it and you'll begin to see different options there. And the last couple things I want to show you is just how to customize the phone. So um, on the home screen, if we hold down, just put your finger on the screen for a second, you'll get this, these three options or these four options here. Um, you can set a wallpaper. So you can basically take a, a picture that maybe you have already in your phone. You can easily make it a wallpaper just by tapping on um, this first option right here. Or there's a store full of uh, free and paid wallpapers you can download. So they have wallpapers, they have themes, where the themes will actually change the background, it'll change your app icons, it'll change the color of like your messaging app, your phone app, it'll even change the background of your navigation panel. If you notice, mine is black with the gold coloring. Normally this is white, that's because I have a theme on it right now. So there's a ton of different themes in here. And a little tip, if you go to top or you go to new, you can then filter out the themes and just see the free ones. And I always say try a free one first before you download a paid one because like, you know, why pay for one if you can find one for free? That works, just my opinion. Next, you can go to icons. You can just change the icons but keep the wallpapers and all that the same. And you can also download different um, always on displays. This is what shows up when your uh, phone is off, but um, on the home screen, you'll still have what's called an always on display. So mine is a little cube and it shows you the time, the date, and the different notifications that I have on the phone. So you can change that in that setting. I have the fingerprint scanner enabled, so that's why when I pick it up and just tap it, it just unlocks. So that leads into our next section, which is how do I set up the security, like a fingerprint or a pin code or the facial recognition. So if you swipe down and you can tap on a little settings wheel as a shortcut, it will take you right to the settings section. Now, there's a lot in this section, probably too much. So what I like to do is just use the search, just tap on the microphone and just say what you're trying to search for. Fingerprint. and it'll kind of take you right to those options. So I'm gonna tap right here, lock screen and screen lock type. So now it's taking me right to this section where I can then set up what type of security I want. So I can do a fingerprint, I can do an iris, which is it reads your eyes. You can do the facial recognition where it reads your, eye, it reads your face, I was about to say eyes again. Um, or the intelligence scan, which is a face and an iris uh, recognition. So a lot of times when you buy the phone at the store, whoever sets it up for you bypasses all this so you don't like get prompted to put your fingerprint in. So this is how you get to it to set it up yourself. So I would just tap on fingerprint. I've actually already set it up, so I kind of blew it. But when you tap on it here, this is where it would have you then um, put your finger on the fingerprint scanner so it can begin to read it and uh, recognize it for the system. So, but that's where you would set up the fingerprint. And then you have a bunch of other options here. Um, so, but that's the main one. That's the sort of the same section. So lock screen is where you'd find uh, the fingerprint and also the iris scan, all that good stuff. So that's about it guys. I wanted to keep it simple. Um, just wanted to go over those basics. So if you're new to an Android phone or you're new to a Samsung Note, or maybe you haven't had a Note in a long time and you didn't even know about all the changes they've made, uh, this video will sort of go over all those different things. So I hope you guys did find this helpful. Make sure you like, favorite, and share if it was helpful. Hit that subscribe button and make sure you also follow us on Instagram at Videos for monthly giveaways and a bunch of other cool stuff. Thanks again for watching. Take care and have a good one.